Hello there everybody and welcome to my mini guide about perks in Jack Lights 3. In this video I'm going to quickly explain how this works, not work uh, necessary in that department, and I'm going to explain the perks and talk about where you can combine them well, what they're good for, and whom they're good for. So, first up the basics, really quickly. So you need a certain number or a certain value in the linked stat to have access to these perks. You also need to have a certain amount of perks already unlocked from the same tree to get access to the later things in the tree. It's worth mentioning that the gold perks always require three picks. That means to get access to the last one of these, you will have to pick two perks from these six. So when your build and theory crafting, take that into account. So, we're going to start with health perks here. So, full body contact. I love that one. It's great for melee characters because temporary HP in form of grit are just so good. When you're up close, you get hit more often because, you know, guns are more accurate up close. But this perk just helps you there. Hit the deck is amazing for many different characters. I love it for snipers especially because many guns, especially sniper guns, can be mounted with a bipod. So you can get into your optimal shooting position more easily. It's also good when you're hiding behind a rock or something because you don't have to save up action points to get prone afterwards to hide yourself from enemy fire. Overall, really versatile perk. Beefed up, well, 20% more HP. I love this for melee fighters or people who are just... Well, there's a lot of versatility. The thing behind this perk is it's also a little bit bland because it's so generalistic. So if you don't know what third perk to pick, this might be one. So let's head on over to the silver part, Rage. Extra damage per wound. Well, this is amazing for melee characters in general. I personally don't like it that much because I prefer a playstyle that avoids getting wounded overall, but admittedly, when you're up close and personal, it is almost impossible to avoid that. And also, it allows you to deal more damage regardless which range. So that means your ranged characters can also deal more damage per wound. So all in all, well, it's an interesting perk, and I think... It is more powerful than I personally admit it to myself, but I just like to play it because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I love to avoid getting wounded. I think it has a lot of usability in Iron Man modes, probably. So, Revenge lets you shoot when you're being attacked. That's really, really powerful. I love this on people that are on, well, Either long-range weaponry, or you take this on people like uh, with a shotgun that are most likely able to counter fire when the enemy's up close to them. Either way, it's a powerful one. It's a little bit odd that it's behind in the health territory, but it's just so good to be able to get free attacks. That's it. What it that because that's what it is. It's a free attack whenever you get attacked. All right, Vanguard. So, grit when you're out of cover and grit when you're adjacent to an enemy. Again, a really powerful one for all the people that rely on high risk taking. So, with the health perks so far, as you see, you can get yourself a lot of uh, grit together. And this is just another example. Goes darn well with full body contact and all those things. So, in the gold department, calm on the fire is, well, it's brutally powerful. So, first up, you can transfer unused action points into the next turn but as an icing on the cake you also get grit when you do so so you can get up to 15 temporary hp every turn if you have to so pretty powerful pretty pretty powerful there's also a lot of strategizing in it because you basically can decide whether to invest three action points as a temporary hp shield or not or you can just go for a very very powerful turn there's just a, a lot of versatility here possible hold position i love this one too so damage reduction while using overwatch or pin down <laughs> yeah this makes your tanky characters go even crazier. And at this point, when you combine this with all the other grit generating perks, you can get to a point where your character is really, really hard to kill, even in the most nonsensical uh, situations. It's pretty good to form up somebody as bullet sponge for your team to hide behind. And battle focus, well, it's a tad bit situational, but 
for people that are up close and personal, I think uh, for especially for Mali, this one is really, really cool because action points when something bad happens is always nice because it gives you the ability to respond correctly. Now, over to the agility branch. Hit and run, oh, well, you should totally take this if you have a melee character in mind. This makes things so much easier because a free move after attacking, well, let's just say with the right combination of things, this can go really out of hand because you basically get to move closer to your next target for free. If the enemy is clumped together, this trait allows you to convert all your action points into attacks because you won't have to pay action points for movement anymore. Amazing trait. Truly amazing trait. So, Flanker is what ranged characters should pick when they want to go deeper into the tree. It's extra damage for flanked enemies and it just does what the, uh, what the label says. I find it a little bit generalistic, just like the beefy, uh, beefed one. But, you know, it's not bad at all. It just emphasizes or, or no, no it it enhances the um, power of your flanked attack, flanking attacks. So, it's not a bad thing. Fast Runner. Increase free move range when wearing light armor. Combine this with hit and run and things can escalate even more. I love this. No, don't need to say much more. I mean, it does increase the amount of risk you have to take, but if you combine that with all the grit generators out of the health bar, you see where I'm getting at. So this is amazing if you want to go for somebody who's either going for a mully, but it also works really, really well with stuff like... Where are we here? Breach and Clear, where you gain free moves after shotgun attacks, so you can combine that as well very, very decently. All right, so Vantage Point gives you better accuracy when shooting from high ground, and Action Point cost reduction when climbing ladders. Sounds a little bit weird, but seriously, this trade allows you to go mid-combat on high Vantage Point so much easier that it's really cool. I mean, most of the time, you will try to position your sniper anyway on high ground from right from the get-go, but you should also take into account that this perk allows you to get away from that vantage point if necessary faster. So, overall, magnificent trade for any kind of sniper. Frog Leaping. Oh, I love this one. Free move range increase when starting your turn in cover. I generally preach that it's a good habit to end your turn in cover, and therefore this just... Gets you, move, gets you to move even faster. Since agility is an action point uh, stat anyways, it's just amazing to have that. I love this. It's just... I would love to have it for on any... on, on every work of mine. That, that's how good I think it is. So, lightning reactions is also really, really cool. Its biggest downside is that it's only usable once per combat. You get a free dodge for the first successful hit per combat, this means the first attack popping on your uh, uh, character successfully is always mitigated. So that's a pretty interesting factor about this one. But apart from that, it's only usable once per common, so it's not one of my favorites. But it is very, very potent in that one thing it does. Now then, gold traits. Lucky streak. 4 AP when you crit twice per turn. Amazing. Just combine that with all the other crit increasers that you have all over the board. For example, Deadeye or something like that. And things go really, really well with that one. More action points are always a good thing. And having a source of inspiration is pretty good on every mercenary. Anatomical precision. Oh boy. 50% more crit damage? <laughs> well, if you aim on, many, uh, on, on critting a lot, this is stupidly powerful. And it's also a very generalistic trait, which fits into many, many uh, slots, but the most success is gained when you mod your weapon for more crit damage, uh, for crit, more crit chance, when you pick up perks like uh, Deadeye for more crit chance and all those things. Really go for the crits if you pick this one. That being said, total concentration is also there. Well, 30% more damage after you kill somebody and you lose that buff when you miss or at the end of combat. So basically, it's a high reward uh, system for being successful. And it's way more powerful than it looks at the first glance because, well, it's 30% more damage. Oh, and if you play conservatively, which this trade allows you to, you know, your torso shots deal more damage after all, so you don't need to go for those risky shots that badly anymore. It's pretty good. And it's also 
important to mention. Works for melee as well, and therefore you can deal tremendous amounts of damage with this one, especially since melee fighters have an easy time of not missing. That being said, very, very powerful trade. Let's send it over to the exterior team. So we got here Untraceable. I love this one. For one, sneaking, I like sneaking. It's pretty cool. But it also gives you 20% more damage when you're failing to one-shot your enemy out of stealth. This is very, very cool because it's a general power-up on every stealth shot that you take. I like this one. Pretty solid bronze perk. So Opportunistic Killer. Critting with Overwatch alone is really cool. And then you also get automatic reload. Uh, it, if you did Overwatch, I love this one. You get a lot out of this perk. Really a lot. Even if you don't manage to crit, the automatic reload is pretty powerful. Especially with low clip size weapons. Really cool. Deadeye. Here we have our generalistic trait again. You see there is a bit, a bit of a pattern in these. 5% extra crit chance per aim. Combine that with all those things that give you more aim levels and... <laughs> Boy, boy, we have a lot of crit there. I love this. It's pretty cool if you go for snipers. And overall, it's a solid foundation for any crit build. You can't do that with any kind of weapon. You don't need to go for sniper guns. It's a lot of fun with pistols and stuff too. Fire routine. Oh boy. Four action points more if you had a successful turn in Overwatch. It's little. It, it, it's really simple, but the dexterity tree allows you to pimp your Overwatch in amazing ways, and this is just another example. I like this. It's situational, but if you manage to pull off a good Overwatch move, you get a big reward for being successful already. I like this one. It's a win harder perk in my opinion, and that's why I like it. Reactive fire, though, well. It's quite interesting because it's uh, basically the opposite to revenge. So when you get hit for a lot of damage, you take it with revenge the, the shot. And here with reactive fire, you take the shot if you got missed by the enemy. So basically, I don't know. Situational, it eats bullets, so you should really pick that up somebody who's not wielding a gun whose bullets you're valuing. But it can be really cool. It can be really cool. I'm a little bit torn on this one. Maybe I was already always playing it wrong. It could be also the case. Ambusher is amazing for every stealther because you have again another stealth kill chance, which is auto kill chance increase. And if you don't manage to kill the enemy outright, they are suppressed, which means their revenge strike will be lower, their movement radius will be lower. It's pretty cool, but I gotta say, for a silver perk, a little bit weak. I I feel like this one could use a little bit of a buff. I, I don't know, it's just me, possibly. Sharpshooter. Ah, well, it's this one plays so well with Deadeye. More aim levels for your first attack each turn, but with snipers, they generally like to shoot only once per turn, so you don't lose that much. And you deal extra damage with that one shot. It's just... It's just amazing. Especially since you can transform that into extra crit chance. And if you are lucky enough to have stuff like Lucky Streak going on for you, or Anatomical Precision, boy, this... This is powerful. Alright, Hill Zone, although, is... I say, you know? You shoot another time. You double the effectiveness of your Overwatch, basically, with that one. This is so brutal, this one. Because, you know, Overwatch is already stupidly action point efficient. You get way more um, shots per action point out of Overwatch, rather than aiming manually during your turn. And this one cranks this up by 100%. Yeah, right. This is possibly one of the most overpowered perks in the game, because it just doubles the amount of attacks, and yeah, you get it by now, I think. Pick it up, have fun with it. I think it's stupidly powerful. Assassination, though, well, yeah, this... If you go for a sneaky sniper, it's pretty good, but it gets outperformed by these other perks here. I generally feel like stealth is fun and all, but it is the stealth perks are not as powerful as the other perks here, especially in the dexterity tree. Now then, strength tree. We have recoil management, which is really massive i love this on pistol fighters which have the tendency to get to shoot three times a turn so you have a high accuracy rating there also really cool with assault rifles and all manner of things where you get to shoot several times 
There we got, and after that, breach and clear. I love this. This is, in my opinion, a mandatory trade for shotgun mercs. Without it, shotgunners will be in a bad position after shooting quite often. This one, you can spend your action points and you can still move a little bit. And if you left some action points over, you can really move far after shooting. It's really cool. Also really good for grenadiers, because they get the same thing. Lob, grenade, run away, possible with this one. Really powerful perk. Killing spree is... yeah. I personally think it is almost mandatory for characters with the melee specialization because melee's power move is to get a lot of people down in one turn because you are brutally action point efficient and killing spree emphasizes disadvantage even more by getting even more damage out of your action points so really powerful thing do not underestimate it because like I, I personally feel that's where Malief uh, Combat excels at, to take down two or three enemies in one turn, and this is even easier with that one. Same goes for Shock Assault. 30% extra crit with melee and point-blank range firearms. So this one is also very, very powerful with pistols, because it gives you a really high reward when you're getting up close with the pistol to an enemy. And basically, when you got Shock Assault, you can st stand in front of the enemy within four tiles and just take torso shots, and you have a decent chance of these being really devastating. Of course, this works well with melee weapons and with shotguns as well, that being said. Well... Ironclad. This is really, really good. So, people that get up close and personal like heavy armor, but heavy armor negates free move. This is your solution to that problem. Combine that, well, not with Fast Runner, but, uh, sorry, I had a wrong thought there. Combine that with grit traits and those things, and you have pretty decent mobility, and you also have a really decent armor at the same time powerful thing if you want to pull off melee in the later stages of the game successfully i find it even somewhat mandatory sudden strike is well i personally find it a tad bit underpowered yes you can you can rip off interrupt attacks with that maybe i didn't play enough melee to really value this perk but i personally find it extremely underwhelming compared to the choices we have there maybe it's just me correct me if i stand wrong there please so, collateral damage. Extra damage to enemies behind cover. I like that one. But overall, this one is really only cool for people that use heavy weapons and machine guns. It's not useful for, for anybody else, but... Well, I'm a little bit torn. I feel like it is not as powerful as other gold perks. Maybe that's just me. Because when we're looking at things like True Strike, we get Auto Crit on Melee and Mark on the target so that means you get to automatically crit your target and you either finish off the enemy then with your ranged gun with a automatically crit but that's not the point your allies get to crit the enemy afterwards too so pretty cool stuff and line breaker well inspiration when killing stuff at point blank range again so good for being up close and personal i guess the collateral damage perk is here so that people that use heavy weapons and machine guns which uh, obviously is also a strength thing, have something to play around here as well. But I personally don't think this is so juicy. Not nearly as juicy as these. What do you guys think? So, Wisdom Savior is a really, really powerful trait, but only for your medics. But it is really cool, especially when you put it onto your main medic, because this way you gain a lot more HP. Apart from that, there is not much more to say about that. The free move after bandaging an ally is interesting, but not really a power move. Distracting shot is really, really nice to have in the team, because if you are in the enemy's overwatch or pin down zone, it is really annoying, and this shot just counters that. It's really cool to have, it's a pure utility skill, but I really, really gotta say, when you need it, and you got it, it's amazing to have it. Apart from that, you won't notice that you have it, though. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's really cool for those situations when it's needed. Arterial Shot is an amazing skill for any sniper because it allows you to deal full damage even if the enemy is behind behind some sort of cover. But it's overall also a very interesting trait because it allows you to debuff the enemy without penalties. 
because usually I like to shoot for arms and legs on specific enemies, for example, boss enemies, which have often really, really stupidly powerful weapons. I like to go for their arms because this makes them inaccurate. Now, with this perk, you don't suffer any damage penalties anymore. It's a real bonus. Same goes for leg shots. They are really good against melee enemies and again, no damage penalty anymore. So it's a very interesting, versatile trait in my opinion. Well, stress management is really cool. It's one of those things though where I gotta say the big gripe about it is it works only once per combat, but you gain four action points when you suffer for the first time from a negative effect. The really interesting aspects here are, for one, if you're wounded you get, a, uh, you get that, but also, if you get suppressed, you lose four action points. If this is the first negative effect in a fight, you can totally ignore a suppression for the first time. So there's a lot of versatility in it, and it allows you to react properly when something bad happens to your mercenary for the first time in the combat. So I see it as a powerful damage mitigation tool, because you get to run away after something bad has happened and position somebody else at the spot, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, things you can do with that. Dire Warning, well, if you play for a high morale playstyle, it's an interesting one because it is amazingly powerful to put this kind of uh, disruption into the enemy formation. It's unreliable though, and it requires a lot of preparation, but I think if you go for it as a specific playstyle, it might be really interesting, but... Well, if you don't prepare it well, it's nighly useless, or it's nighly ir unnoticeable, so... Let me know what you guys think about that. Inspiring Strike, though, I love this. Put this on a sniper and have some fun with it. Because, you know, here are a lot of perks that are interesting for snipers. Arterial Shot is good for a sniper. Inspiring Strike gives your snipers morale bonus when they hit somebody. And combine that with Dire Warning. And you get some... You see, there there revolves a certain playstyle around that. Anywho. Not much more to say about that. In the gold section, though, we give we, we have a lot of interesting things here. Or one, I love painkiller because that is grit for bandaging it during a combat. This makes your medics a lot more powerful during combat because basically it means if somebody gets hit, they are actually safe to f to eat another bullet afterwards, and that's an interesting mechanic that this uh, perk allows you to play around. Shock and awe. Well, I like this one because, you know, if you go around a morale playstyle, this is amazing. Shock and Awe, by the way, does make Dire Warning a lot more effective because you start out with the necessary prerequisite to trigger panic into the, in the enemy lines. That being said, though, it is a, a perk that requires a focus around that playstyle, otherwise it's not that interesting. I mean, it's 10% more damage, but the other gold perks offer so much more than just 10% more damage. Trickshot, for example. So Trickshot is, for me personally, one of the most amazing wisdom perks out there. It enhances those utility shots. Leg shots apply knockdown, which makes them more vulnerable to, enemy, to melee attacks, so you can't prep up for a melee attacker. Numbness is really cool because, you know, I've been talking about arm shots for bosses. This takes it to another level. And groin shots applying exposed is, again, really powerful. You can prep up the enemy and steal his action points at the same time. Right, so it's up to you to create a build out of these. And as a outro for this video, I really want to emphasize how important it is to have an eye on the stats here. Kalina is a famous example of a merc that has severe learning issues. She only starts out with one perk here that she can't actually pick. Her stats are all low. She's even featuring a super low wisdom, so she learns quite slow. So, in, if you are looking for your mercs, therefore, you should really keep an eye out on stats that are close to 80 or around 80. And if you want those really juicy perks, get them to 90. But the, the ideal way to pull this off, in my experience, is pick up your merc, level them up once or twice, think about their role in, the, in your team, and then select one or two gold perks that you want to have, and then play towards them, and increase the stats if necessary via magazines or training, and then you'll get there. Because the gold perks are actually the 
powerful things that you're after and you should totally try to get your entire build path towards something that goes super well for your character. The earlier you do this, the earlier your mercenary will be stupidly overpowered. By the way, as a fun fact at the end of this video, that's what making your recruit mercenaries really shine. Many of them have really powerful perks, these unique perks that I've been not talking about, and they have a lot of levels still to gain. So the recruit mercenaries actually do give you the biggest opportunity to, to skill them according to your liking. My favorite example here is MD. He has a high wisdom and he's basically able to learn pretty much everything. You just have to train him accordingly. And since he has a high wisdom, he learns fast. And therefore, you can really... This guy, you can transform him into the soldier of your liking. He's uh, He has a solid foundation in every direction. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really did my best to explain these things as good as I can. Leave some comments down below. I'm always happy to hear from you folks. Let me know what you think about possible combinations. I'm pretty sure I'm not even close to have found everything. So, yeah. I'd love to hear from, back from you. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you appreciate it. And of course, consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you. That's a big help for me as well. And a playlist link is down there below for all the other Jack the Lines 3 info videos I did. So if you like that one, you might want to check that out too. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you have a great time today and see you next time.